Good, happy Sunday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Sunday morning edition of Good Morning, New Hampshire. It's Sunday, November 17, 2019. Let's begin. First up, let's begin with your local news. First up, Dover Police investigating death of five-year-old boy. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. Just a devastating situation playing out here in Dover. That little boy was found dead earlier this morning, and now investigators are working to figure out just how he died. Our heart goes out to the uh, family here. It's really too bad. Lieutenant Brant Dolleman says the 911 call came into the Dover Police Department just after 9 o'clock Saturday morning. A five-year-old boy found unresponsive by family. Police and fire rushed to the Summer Street home, but it was too late. The boy was pronounced dead at the scene. This is a terrible tragedy for everybody involved, including friends and family um, of this young boy. It, it's a terrible tragedy uh, for, quite frankly, the paramedics and, and uh, patrol officers that have to respond to these types of things. Very few details are being released at this time. Police are not calling this death suspicious. But as for how the boy died, that is still unknown. Well, that's what's under investigation. We're working with the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner to determine that. Uh, the next step in this investigation is to have an autopsy. An autopsy has been scheduled for Sunday. Investigators hoping it will provide some insight into how a young life was tragically cut short. Meantime, investigators are asking anyone with information to contact the department. While we always want people to reach out to the police department, there's not specific information we're expecting the public to bring forward in this particular case, but certainly if people have information, we want them to feel free to come forward. And again, an autopsy is scheduled for tomorrow. Reporting in Dover, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Michael Bennett holds town hall at New England College. Says Democrats need moderate candidate in 2020. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Okay, looks like we're having technical difficulties with the video. Give us one minute. Let's try to get this video playing for all of you. now and several presidential candidates are campaigning across the state this weekend. Michael Bennett held a town hall this afternoon in Henniker on the campus of New England College. The Colorado senator recently decided to double down on New Hampshire and spend more time campaigning here. He tells News 9 the first in the nation primary gives him the best chance to win. Uh, it's just a real opportunity for us to come to a place where people want to have town hall after town hall after town hall. And I, my plan is to answer every question as truthfully as I can. Bennett says he recently took over a campaign office in Nashua, vacated by his Senate colleague Kamala Harris, whose campaign recently laid off almost all of her staff in New Hampshire. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your... 2020 New Hampshire candidate tracker for today. We have one candidate in New Hampshire today. Kelsey Gabbard, she has one event today in New Hampshire. And her event is a town hall at the Palace in Manchester, New Hampshire at 6.30 p.m. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into weather. Weather right now is clear, 
20 degrees. And your weather for today. Partly cloudy skies this morning will become overcast during the afternoon. High 37 degrees. Wind northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for tonight, cloudy with freezing drizzle developing after midnight. Low 29 degrees. Wind north northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And we're going to switch gears now. Let's go into sports. When a squad wins football title, let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Jason King. Seven high school... With our evaluation process, there's no mystery and no games. You're there every step of the way, and after a couple of questions and a few pictures, we'll have your offer ready for you. Football playoff games on the schedule today, including one title game, Winnesquam and Fall Mountain playing for the Division IV Championship in Laconia. First quarter, Fall Mountain's going to cough it up in the backfield, and then it gets scooped up by Gunnar Horman. And he's going to take it more than 60 yards in the other direction. That's a touchdown for Winnesquam, and the Bears took a 7 to nothing lead. Second quarter now, junior quarterback Philip Nichols connects with Garrett Mango, who cuts it to the outside, and he's gone. 55 yards for the touchdown, 14 to nothing. Winnesquam led at halftime. In the third quarter, Nichols back to pass again. He's going to hit Horman, but Isaiah Silva strips it away. Furman Gomez recovers for the Wildcats, but Nichols and Mango connected twice for touchdowns, and the Winnesquam Bears are the Division IV champions for the second consecutive season. 20 to nothing was the final tonight. I mean, we knew coming in this was a totally different Fall Mountain team. It was the preparation all week, the guys, they came to play today, and the turnout was great. All right, semifinals in Division One. Lunderry at home with Salem. The Lancers leading seven to nothing in the first. Jake McKecker and back to pass, but he's going to get picked off by Salem's Michael Ferentz. Great grab by Ferentz, and that would lead to points. Josh Maroon is going to take it in on the counter play here. Touchdown for Salem. They were all tied up seven seven, but Lunderry answered on their next drive. Jeff Wheatonfield on the direct snap, and he scores a Lancer touchdown. And Londonderry goes on to win it 35-14, to so they're in the title game. Exeter home with Merrimack in the other semifinal. Uh, on the opening drive for the Blue Hawks, Ryan Grijalva, play action, and he throws it up to Nathan McDonald, who gets behind the defense. That's a touchdown for the Blue Hawks, made it 7-zip. Exeter's next possession, another drive capped by a Derek Edmiston touchdown run. Exeter wins it 34 to 13, so it'll be Exeter and Londonderry for the Division I championship. That's scheduled for next Sunday at 6 o'clock in Durham. Bo hosting Hollis Brookline in the Division II semifinals. The Falcons undefeated on the season. Cavaliers on top, though, 2014 in the third. Sander Wimmer, the senior quarterback, keeps it around the right side, gets a great block from his receiver, and he's down to the five-yard line on the next play. It's Mark uh, Mark Andre Thermitis, who takes it in for the Cavaliers' touchdown, 27-14 after the extra point. Wimmer had 115 yards rushing in a touchdown, also threw for 210 yards in a touchdown. Stephen Garrett had two touchdowns for Bo, but Hollis Brookline wins 34-14, and uh, they play in the D2 title game for the first time in school history. The Cavaliers will take on the Plymouth Bobcats. Plymouth beat Alvern in the other semifinal, 14-7. Robert Oliver and Cody Bannon scored the Plymouth touchdowns. So the Bobcats will be looking to make it four straight state titles. The D2 title game, Sunday at 2.30. That's also in Durham. In Division Three, top-seeded Lebanon hosting Hillsborough Deering Hopkinton. 7 nothing Raiders in the first quarter. The Red Hawks driving. Mike Oberheim rolls right and dumps it off to Cooper Coldwell. Uh, he picks up the first down, but that drive would stall. Second quarter, here come the Raiders. John Williman rolling left, finds Wade Rainey, and he takes it in for the touchdown. The top-seeded Raiders win big, 41 to nothing. Peter Alessandro threw for a 60-yard touchdown pass to Trey Taylor, and John Tebow ran for 250 yards and four touchdowns to lead Trinity past Stevens, 48-14. So the Pioneers will face Lebanon for the D3 championship. That's next Sunday at 11 a.m., also at Wildcat Stadium in Durham. 
Okay, and there you go. Congratulations to the team that won yesterday. Patriots, they play today at 4.25 p.m. New England Patriots at Philadelphia Eagles, and you can watch it on CBS. And switching gears now, let's go into New Hampshire life. And let's take a look at your event calendar for today. 300 years of Thanksgiving tradition, guided tours, 10 o'clock a.m. at Strawberry Bank Museum. Mia Wigan solo art show, never far from home, 10 o'clock a.m. Uptown Chandler House Museum. Family painting, 10 o'clock a.m. The Canvas Road Show. Rabbit Ringe Artist at the Summit Winery, 10 o'clock a.m. at Summit Winery. Natural Take a Hike Day, Mount Livermore, 10 o'clock a.m. Squam Lake Association. 21 View, 11 a.m. Fine Fry Fine Art. Open Paint Canvas Road Show, 11 a.m. The Canvas Road Show. Mary Market, 11 a.m. at Junction 71. In the final, at 12 p.m., Camera Commons at the Camera Commons. And if you want to see that full event calendar, we will have a link for you on the Riley King Network Facebook page right after broadcast. And today, as you all know, it's Sunday. That means Sunday brunch. People go out for brunch on Sunday. And this week's restaurant that we are featuring that does Sunday brunch is called Chellos. And here's a look at the information. Cello's Farm Italian House at 143 Raymond Road, Candia, New Hampshire. They are closed Monday. They're open Tuesday through Thursday, 3.30 to 9 p.m. Friday, 3.30 to 10 p.m. Saturday, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And Sunday, brunch from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then dinner from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Dine in, take out. Phone number is right here and a link to their website. And let's take a look at some of their yummy brunch items at their restaurant. Mm -mm -mm. All looks yummy. I love Sunday brunch, as you all know here at the Riley King Network. We all love brunch. And here's a look at Cello's website. And if you've never been to Cello's, I encourage you all to go. I've been there a couple of times, and I love it there. I've never been there for brunch yet, but... I want to try to get there for brunch someday. So go on and check out brunch, 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Happening right now. It's 10 a.m. right now. And that is it for this Sunday morning edition of Good Morning New Hampshire. I hope you all enjoyed watching this Sunday edition of Good Morning New Hampshire. Have a great rest of your Sunday. I'll see you back here for Good Evening New Hampshire this evening. Goodbye.